Hey everybody and welcome back to another Emory Security YouTube video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Pico CTF web exploitation section for 2025. So I thought this may be a fun little series that we can do on the channel where there really won't be a ton of editing and a ton of cuts. There may be a couple fast forwards, there may be a few cuts here and there depending on how long of a section it is that I don't speak, but for the most part, I'm going to try to give as much raw information as possible to you, the viewer, to get as much value out of these videos. So a lot of people were asking me about my methodology surrounding web application security and how I go about challenges within CTFs. I thought what better way to try it out than going onto the practice on Pico CTF and seeing how many exploits we can solve in under 20 minutes. So we're going to be doing a few challenges here. The first two is SSTI one and no sanity one. And over time, we're going to start to get to the more medium and hard challenges, which I hope can lead to a series and maybe help you understand a little bit more about web application security and my methodology surrounding web app security. If you do have any questions or suggestions for this content, please let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to hear more about what you guys want to see. Let's get started with web exploitation SSTI one, and it has 25,000 solves on it. And it says, I made a cool website where you can announce whatever you want. Try it out. Additional details will be available when you launch the instance. So let's go about it and launch the instance to see what we have to work with. And this may take just a second. So we could see here that we have access to the website now. So let's go to the website and it says, what do you want to announce? So whenever you're dealing with SSTI, which I believe is what it was, we're going to have to go to something called payload all the things. So first things first, what we're going to want to try to do is we're going to try to want to identify what application is running on the back end, whether it be Python, whether it be Jinja. So we can just click OK and we could see 49 is there. This means that we are most likely using Jinja on the back end. So what we could do is we could head on over to payload all the things and inside of payload all the things, they'll have a section pertaining to SSTI. So scrolling down, you could see it does say server side template injection. And because we're going to just assume that it's Python, we'll click on Python. And we're going to also assume that it's Jinja 2 just because most of these sort of CTFs have Jinja 2 in place. So we'll just copy this payload over here and we'll paste it on into the input field and we'll click on OK. And we can see here that that's exactly what we have to do. So let's go back over here and we're going to do instead of ID, we're just going to do a cat. I don't know where the flag is located. Maybe we could do root slash flag .txt. That's not where it's located. Does it say exactly where the flag is located? I don't believe so. So what we can do though, is we can head back on over to our website and we could just do a simple LS in our current working directory because maybe that'll give us information about where the flag may be. And it looks like the flag is within our current folder. So we can come back here and we'll just do a cat flag and we can retrieve the flag. And this is what it looks like. So we will copy this and paste it on in to Pico CTF. So pretty easy challenge to start off. Nothing too, too crazy. Let's head on over to no sanity one. And it says a developer has added profile picture upload functionality to a website. However, the implementation is flawed and it presents an opportunity for you. Your mission, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to navigate to the provided web page and locate the file upload area. Your ultimate goal is to find the hidden flag in the root directory and we'll have to launch the in instance to obtain the website information. So we'll wait for a second and we can see that we do have a web server. So let's head on over here and we do have that upload functionality that they were mentioning. So we're just going to look up, let's say, dummy images or something, maybe uh, small images just to see what we're working with. I guess we can, we can go with the star Wars theme. So we will go about and save this image to our downloads folder and we will upload a picture over here. So we'll click on downloads 
and we will upload the PNG and it says the photo has been updated in uploads photo.jpg. And if we head on over to it, can we view it? Let's find out. And it looks like we can. Okay. So, and we can also see here that there's a tiny hint, which is that they are using PHP in the back end. So what we can do is we can upload a reverse shell through PHP. And there's something called, I think it's called pony shell that we can use. Here we go, pony shell, which is a single PHP shell. So we'll just grab this. As a matter of fact, what we could do here, so we could just click on raw and we'll just come over here. Let's go to desktop. We'll just make dirt to Pico CTF. And let me just make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. And then we are also going to just name this make dir no sanity one. And we'll just do a W get to this website. So we'll copy this on over and we will get the shell.php. Now we will need to modify it with nano. And what we're going to do, actually, I don't believe this is a shell in which it's going to actually send any information back to us, it's just gonna be hosted on the server. So what we could do is we could see if we need to use Burp Suite or not. So we'll just head on over to desktop, Pico CTF, and it says that all files, but for some reason it's not here. Oh, it looks like I didn't even put no sanity into the Pico CTF. So we'll just upload the shell.php and we'll upload that file. And it looks like that it has been uploaded to uploads shell.php. So we can come over here and we can paste it on in and we can see that we do get the shell and it looks almost identical to an actual shell, but it's just on the web server instead. If we do an LS here, we could see that we do have RC onto the box. So we can go to slash root and see if we have access. It looks like there is an error. Uh, what if we try to cat root slash flag maybe and it says permission denied. So what exactly do we have to do? Are we supposed to be doing some form of like privilege escalation or something? Cause that's going to be weird for a CTF. Like we can't do a pseudo tech L, can we? Oh, we can. So we could just do pseudo SU and we would be root, but because we're not on a stabilized shell per se, it's not gonna actually work. So we could do maybe something like pseudo cat root and then flag to see if maybe there's something there and that's not even a real thing, flag.txt. And now we got the flag, there we go. Okay, so let's copy this on over to our Pico CTF box and we will continue with the next challenge. Let's paste it on in and click submit. So far, these are not too crazy again these are pretty easy which is hence why the difficulty is easy we are only about nine or ten minutes into this so let's continue we'll select the cookie monster secret recipe and it says cookie monster has hidden his top secret cookie recipe somewhere on his website as an aspiring cookie detective your mission is to uncover this delectable secret can you outsmart Cookie Monster and find the hidden secret? And we'll just click on the launch instance and begin navigating the website. And we can go on and start just deleting a bunch of this stuff and head on over to the website. So let's take a look. And it looks like we just have a login page. Is there anything inside of the source? We just see login.php and it's doing a post request with the username and the password. And inside of it, it just says to grab the cookies, I guess. So we'll just come over here and we'll just try type in, let's say admin admin. So the cookie monster challenge for whatever reason wasn't working. So we're going to move on to the next challenge, which is web decode. Do you know how to use the web inspector? And it says to launch the instance. So let's do that quickly and see what it has. So we'll head on over to the website. And we'll try to find the flag and it just is a bunch of random stuff. So we can click on view page source and there are a few things here. So let's see if we can see anything suspicious. 
Doesn't really look like there's a whole lot going on. Keep searching and don't give up. Okay. Um, is there anything else that comes to our attention? Maybe it's a sec intro, but I don't really know exactly what that means. Um, so try inspecting the page. You might find it here, but when you do inspect it, I don't think anything actually shows up here. So we may have to do something more. I just don't know what yet. Um, is there maybe a, is there like a robots.txt or something? And it says 404. So there is a page in here somewhere, I think that we need to look at, but I'm not entirely sure where that would be because nothing in the source would, is showing anything. Uh, is there anything inside of the network that we can maybe look at? Let's just do the response. Is there anything new? Probably not but it's always worth checking just to see. And there's nothing there. So we're not gonna worry too much about that. Um, it says here, notify true with this, I think maybe base 64, not entirely sure. I may be starting to look a little bit too into it, but we can come over to our terminal and we could do an echo here and then we could just do base 64 tag d and it looks like that was the flag Alrighty, so let's bring this on in and submit it so continuing on with the easy boxes we have unminify and we'll just start launching the instance and it says i don't like scrolling down to read the code of my website so i have squished it as a bonus my pages load faster browse here and find the flag so we could see here that we do get that page and it was pretty swift and everything is all discombobbled. So we could just type in maybe just Pico CTF and see if we do retrieve anything new. Maybe we could do like a Pico CTF like that and then see, maybe we could do a whole word wrap or maybe we could just beautify this to make it easier. So we can go into HTML, beautify, and there should be an online beautifier somewhere. I believe this would do it. So we can do this and then we could do minify and then obviously it squishes everything in just a little bit more but we could see inside of here it says pico ctf pretty code and then we get the flag inside of here so we can then paste it on into our challenge which was not very difficult at all let's just look at book martlet one more challenge and then we will wrap this up so why search for the flag when i can make a bookmarklet to print it for me that's a very weird name of saying bookmark but let's give it a shot so we will launch this challenge and we'll click on here and again we have a bunch of random things that i don't know what exactly it's doing um so we could just go to inspect maybe console and then we could do a allow pasting so click type in allow pasting into the terminal and then we could just paste that code into for the javascript to decode and then we do retrieve the flag so we'll copy this on over and we'll paste it into pico ctf so today we did five challenges and these are very basic challenges nothing too crazy but i just wanted to show you the start to my methodology for ctfs what i go about doing my thought process how i go about navigating the different kinds of web applications all that stuff in the next video we're going to continue this easy pathway but also maybe do a couple of mediums so be sure to stay tuned for that. And again, if you do have any questions regarding Pico CTF or you need any help with a specific challenge, please let me know in the comment section down below. But other than that, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.